Hello. In this week's Torah portion, Mishpatim, we read, quote, If you see the ass of one who hates you lying under its burden, you shall not leave it with him. You shall help him to lift it up. Unquote. From this and similar verses came, came Sa'ar Ba'alei Hayim, which means the suffering of living creatures, and is the Jewish principle that bans inflicting unnecessary pain on animals. Now, if you're enjoined to relieve the suffering of an animal belonging to one who hates you, then surely you must do the same for an animal of one who does not hate you. And if you should do it for an animal, surely you should do it for a human being also. This is an a fortiori argument, kal vahomer in Hebrew, one of the ways the rabbis extracted commandments from the Torah. The Talmud tells a humorous story based on this verse. I will use it as a springboard to explore humor in the Talmuds in a series of Divrei Torah. Indeed, the Talmud itself tells us that Rabbah, a 4th century sage, always began his lectures with a joke, and only afterwards did he start seriously teaching halacha. So, the Talmud in Tracted Bava Metzia tells us that Rabbi Ishmael, son of Rabbi Yose, was walking on a road when he met a man carrying the load and sticks, a load of sticks. The man put the sticks down, rested, and then said to Rabbi Ishmael, load me up. The rabbi was required to help him, according to our verse. It was a hard day, and Rabbi Ishmael, who was overweight, asked the man, how much are your sticks worth? The man answered, half a zoos. So Rabbi Ishmael gave him half a zoos, thinking it would get him out of his obligation. But he was careful to point to the sticks and say, hefker, meaning ownerless. I declare these sticks ownerless. This was important so that if anyone took them, he would not be charged with thefts. The man then said, I claim ownership of these ownerless sticks. Then turning to the rabbi, he said again, load me up. The rabbi understood that this perpetual motion machine game could go on forever. So he gave the man another half zoos and again declares the sticks ownerless. Seeing that the man was again about to claim the sticks, he added, I have declared the sticks ownerless except to you, and walked away. Now the rabbis, upon hearing this story, wondered, can something be declared ownerless with a condition attached? They concluded, no, it cannot. But Rabbi Ishmael had to stop the man somehow, and did, and did it with mere words. Also, the rabbis asked, was not the rabbi an elder for whom it was undignified to take up a load? They answered, yes, but he acted beyond the requirements of the law. Here's another funny story from Tractate Sukkah. How does one celebrate Sukkot on a ship? Rabbi Gamliel says that if someone erects his Sukkah on the deck of a ship, it is invalid, because it could easily be blown away. But Rabbi Akiva declares it valid. One time, both of these rabbis were traveling on a ship during Sukkot. Rabbi Akiva, true to his own teaching, erected a sukkah on the deck of the ship. The next day, the wind blew it away. So Rabbi Gamliel turned to Rabbi Akiva and said disingenuously, Akiva, where's your sukkah? Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi once suffered from a disorder of the bowels and asked his colleagues, does anyone know whether apple cider bought from a non-Jew is prohibited or permitted? Rabbi Ishmael, son of Rabbi Yosei, same one as above, replied, My father once had the same complaints, and they brought him apple cider bought from a non-Jew, which was 70 years old. He drank it and recovered. Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi then said to him, You had this information all along, and you let me suffer? Rabbi Ishmael could well have replied, you never asked me before. The next story teaches us that we must be very, very careful on what we say to the high and mighty. The emperor of Rome wanted the Jews to assimilate completely in the Roman Empire. So he proposed to Rabbi Tanhum, come, let us all be one people. The rabbi answered, very well. But we are circumcised and cannot possibly become like you because our circumcision cannot be undone.
So why don't you become circumcised like us? The emperor was miffed at having been bested and replied, You have spoken well. Nevertheless, anyone who gets the better of the king in a debate must be thrown to the lions. So they threw the rabbi to the lions. But the lions did not eat him. One of the emperor's advisors whispered in the emperor's ear, The lions did not eat him because they are not hungry. The emperor replied, Well, let's test this theory. And he had the advisor thrown to the lions. And the lions ate him. Be very, very careful on what you say to the high and mighty. Beruria, wife of Rabbi Meir, was a Talmudic scholar in her own right, and often challenged the rabbis on their rulings. She became famous for her sharp wits. Tractate Eruvin gives us this example. Rabbi Yose the Galilean went on a journey and met Beruria on the way. He asked her, Excuse me, what road should we take in order to get to Lodz? She replied, You stupid Galilean! Did our sages not teach in the Mishnah, do not talk too much to women? You should have asked, how to Lodz? She was jokingly telling the rabbi, If you preach that you should not talk too much to women, then you should have phrased your question with as few words as possible. This will be all for this week. Join me again soon for another edition of Humor in the Talmuds. Shabbat Shalom.